So Adam, we've got quite an impressive selection of rifles in front of us here. Um, a lot to get through, and I think you're chomping at the bit to explain what they are. The floor is yours. Thank you, Simon. Yeah, so we've we've come we've come a long way since the early days of the matchlock to where we are with what is the current issue British Army Service rifle, the SAAT uh, SAAT rifle. Um, the family's called the SA-18, as you'll know, there's a, a, a big selection here on the table. Uh, and they all represent either a development of um, or the current use uh, weapon system in place. Um, so what is the SA-80? Um, officially known as the, L, uh, known as the L85, with different um, designations afterwards to denote um, which model. Um, mm -hmm. Came into being um, as an idea, actually, after the Second World War, the, the, uh, the UK were looking for a replacement for the then um, number four rifle. Had seen the writing on the wall with um, the use of semi-automatics and then automatic weapons during the Second World War. Uh, and we're looking to slowly bring into, uh, through the R&D process, research and development, a weapon system that would meet that need. Um, now clearly, um, uh, UK Trump for the SLR in our previous episodes, and they went for um, a self-loading rifle in, the, in, in a form of the FN foul. Um, but it still didn't stop them developing. And um, again, much like at the um, end of uh, the 19th century with um, a big rise in technology, mm -hmm. um, so did the lessons learned from the Second World War. Right. Uh, and one of those lessons were, was the, the use of what's known as an intermediate cartridge. So okay. not a small pistol cartridge mm -hmm. and not a big, heavy, um, uh, what known as a battle rifle cartridge. Sure. So what we had in the SLR, very big, big round. Um, very good at long range. Mm -hmm. um, at stopping power is excellent at long range, but at actually distances um, that uh, enemies would be engaged in weren't necessarily five, six hundred meters plus. They were nearer sort of the two, three hundred meters. I see. So a lot of research went into developing a, a smaller round, mm -hmm. um, um, and uh, one of those rounds the British looked at was the development of a new round for a new rifle, which would be the 4.85 millimeter, mm -hmm. to go into their new ballpup design rifle. Now, for a bit of definition, what I've got here is a trials version of what would become the SA80 family, and this was a um, trialed in the in the 70s, um, and it was chambered for a 4.85 millimeter cartridge, very fast moving cartridge, quite small, and you can see it's quite a Quite a dainty, dainty mm. weapon. Mm. Now, um, even though the 4.85 was actually a very good round for this rifle, the mood music at the time with NATO was to move to a standard, which was um, a newly created um, round by Remington, which was a 0.223, um, which was then used and made into the 5.56 mm -hmm. um, by, by the Belgians. And the, the 5.56 was adopted. Ergo, we had to rechamber and relook. Um, at a new uh, uh, new round, we adopted the 5.56, and a lot of research and development went into making what would become the SA80. Now, the SA80 um, was a bit late, as you know, that's told. The the SA means small arms. Right. 80 should be 80. This rifle didn't come into service in um, 1980. In fact, it was rolled out officially in 1985. Hence, oh, right, um, right. L85. Okay. Um, <laughs> And was and was and after a lot of trials and development um, from the original version, which we see here, of, um, which you can see the Genesis from, came in uh, with this version, which is this is actually a prototype version of the A1. Um, now I know this; I've used this myself um, uh, in, in early days of service. Mm -hmm. uh, they were still being used. Not the most well loved of um, <laughs> firearms. Um, I mean, this is a prototype, which has some slight differences here. There's a, there's a catch here, and you'll see the the luminous safety there. Sure. But essentially this is a, 
this is what we had, and it's got a, a blank fire magazine attached. Now, it was rattly, um, <laughs> didn't like sand, and some of the reports that came back from uh, the first Gulf especially were it did not like heat and sand because, right. as you can see, a lot of this construction is polymer, open, a lot of vents here, mm -hmm. and actually the, the bolt, and we can take one apart in a second, mm -hmm. um, does show um, uh, a lot of internal workings, which has actually been taken from the AR-18, the Stoner AR-18 rifle. Um, it's quite complicated. Yeah, okay. Um, and soldiers being soldiers and uh, proof experience, we like a simple thing. Yeah, so these yeah. were quite heavy, uh, quite unwieldy. Uh, wieldy in the sense of, for their size, heavy, and also a lot of working parts going on. Sure, sure, sure. So reliability in the A1 was, wasn't great. Right, right. So this was in service and would see service throughout the 90s. Um, so the late 80s into the 90s, um, and obviously lessons learned, quite slow to, to change those, but it was decided in the turn of the new millennium that this thing needed a facelift. Okay. <laughs> um, and so much so that contracted out after a lot of re um, uh, research and development, Hector and Koch, the mm -hmm. German manufacturer, were to take this design and uh, essentially retool the whole thing. Okay. And um, what we got um, in the early 2000s, what we see here, and this is the AT version. Now, um, originally this came out with the green four stock you see here, and mm -hmm. um, this has been um, upgraded for uh, what we did as an urgent operational requirement for Afghanistan and Iraq, mm -hmm. this addition of Picatinny rail and front bipod. But essentially, what they did is they took all the working parts, um, made a tighter, well-fitted um, piece of machinery, essentially, sure. and this thing absolutely did perform a hell of a lot better than this. Right, You'll right. see the notable difference is the change of a cocking handle. And I know from first-hand experience, it's had a, co a tendency when you fired, sometimes the round would bounce off this cocking handle back in again, um, which is only a blank round, but it meant stoppage after stoppage after sure. stoppage. You can see the obvious change here. Um, and and really that was, and I think we've got, yeah, no, this has got a slightly upgraded muzzle. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but actually, Aesthetically, it's quite similar, but mm -hmm. it, it was the internal workings that they made a lot better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This one's actually fitted with a with an ACOG site. Um, this was an urgent operational requirement for um, Iraq and Afghanistan because um, so, they actually came with this SUSAT. Um, we'll have, to have a better look at the SUSAT because this rifle was designed, uh, as you can see from uh, from the early version, to be fitted with some form of um, organic site, okay. which is very different from a lot of weapon systems at the time. And it came out with the SUSA, which actually is is a very good good site. This mm -hmm. uh, site unit, small arms Trilux, mm -hmm. it's got a bit of tritium gas inside. Um, a good site, up to 300 meters, is actually quite a reliable piece of equipment. Um, mm -hmm. It's still quite heavy and unwieldy. Mm -hmm. um, hence the need to have something um, a bit more updated for sure. the, the, the conflicts um, in Iraq and Afghanistan. Sure. So where did we go from here then? All right, well, so, um, you know, we've seen sort of 20 years of campaigning in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, still a good weapon system, but very heavy. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't the most modular. This this system here of having this, what we call a Picatinny rail attached, is, is all, it's aftermarket, essentially. Right, right. Uh, it doesn't, hasn't got a continuous rail, so it basically needed another facelift. Um, so very recently, in the last sort of few years, what they've done is produce the A3, which you can see actually is quite a lot different. Um, they've done away with this. It's all one solid um, rail. Let's put it down there. One solid rail. I see. Has yeah. these flip up leaf sights. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, back and front. It's got this nice color coat of um, uh, sort of paint of um, desert tan, and this mm -hmm. kind of modular system up front. Um, essentially makes it uh, a streamlined, and if you f and we'll do a bit of weight, I feel the weight of that, and you know you held the A1 earlier, <laughs> it's a bit lighter. Yes, a right, lighter, okay, yeah. yeah, sure, sure. So I mean, it's still a heavy weapon, yep. and arguably there's a there's an argument to say, why don't we buy something else, but, you know, good old British style, we've kept with this. So it's still <laughs> a good old weapon, it is, it is not too bad at all. So am I right in thinking that this is now still being used by t today's yeah. modern army? Yeah, so these are still in service. A2 yeah. is still in service, but what it's been gradually phased out by the A3. Right. Um, and this has got a, you know, a life, 
well into the next 10 years plus, but wow. who knows how that will change. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely the weapon that's taken us into the new millennium, for wow. sure. Wow, that's fascinating. So we've got another iteration of it just down here. Yeah. So what's this in? So uh, as, as with a lot of weapon systems, there are variations to support the need. Now what we've got here, and actually this is a trials version, but it just illustrates the point. It's actually been hit by a round here. Wow. Um, this is the carbine version. So this would be, it's all intents and purposes, exactly the same workings or, or thereabouts as the, the A, A1 and A2. Um, but what it's got is a, a much stubbier barrel. Right. And this would be issued to helicopter crews, um, some tank crews. Essentially, when you need a smaller space to put something in, sure, yeah. You know, as opposed to issuing them with um, sort of like a submachine gun, like an MP5, um, this is fires a rifle caliber. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a short, stubby barrel. Mm -hmm. Not going to do an awful lot. Mm -hmm. But it's got the same caliber, so there's commonality across the platform. Sure. Um, so that would be tank crews, helicopter crews, um, and sort of specialists would be using that sort of thing. Wow, beautiful. And, and, and then this one here. Yeah, so when the L85 came out, um, there was a desire to sort of follow the almost the Russian model of um, producing support weapons from their, from their small arms. So when the L85 came out, um, they also issued the L96. Right. Sorry, L sorry, L86. I get my own wordings right. So the L86, for all intents and purposes, and I'll just put the bipod down for a second. Um, the um, the L96 is a um, is a support weapon. So L, L LSW light support weapon. It is exactly the same as this, up to about to the, to the barrel here. Um, but from here onwards, you've got a heavier barrel and a longer barrel with a fitted bipod. And the whole point of this was, um, whereas this was um, very accurate up to about 300 meters, and you could section fire up to 600, this was designed to be accurate beyond the sort of 300 meter mark. Oh, I see. This is for sustained fire. Right. Still 5.56, five, but it was to um, support, and hence the, the title, a light support weapon. But, uh, you know, I've carried this many times, and it's... Uh, it's it's not too bad. It's sure. not too bad. They are they are they are being phased out. Um, the requirement for these now is um, less so when we've got more more up to date things like the sharpshooter in place to get those those intermediate distances between right uh, the rifle and the uh, sniper rifle. Sure, sure, sure. And of course, again, there's the ubiquitous. Yes, so the bayonet. So this was redesigned for the SA80, um, and um, again. Uh, a real utilitarian tool. We've got something that's probably see more like a knife. Yeah. Um, fits over the muzzle, um, uh, which is interesting. Okay, uh, locks into place. Mm -hmm. um, and because this is a ballpup design, and for those who don't know, a ballpup design essentially means um, the action is at the back. So if your hand's here, the action is kept behind your hand. So you keep the set, you keep a regular um, rifle barrel, but it's set back. So yeah. you don't lose any accuracy in okay. shortening a barrel, right. but you get this design. He but hence the need to still have some form of bayonet. So that's the, um, uh, that's the bayonet. And it actually comes with a rather good looking um, sheath, um, which actually you can combine that into make into wire cutters, right, a sharpening right. stone, and yeah. there's even a, even a folding saw in there as well. well I don't well. Know if I get it out, but I might be able to. This is an old one. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. See, yes. Okay, well. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, really good bit of kit. But wow. um, like I say, this this family of weapons um, started in its humble origins here in the trials version. Very rare to have this. All the way up to here with the um, the A3. Um, it's the weapon that's taken us into the new millennium and will serve in conflicts to come.